Hey, you guys, welcome to We Got Issues. We're getting ready to go live on the radio show. So I'll be right back with you after the first break. Where's that? Where's that? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it is going down today. It is going down today. Hey, 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 it is going down. It is going down. This is exciting. This is exciting. I'm looking at Facebook and I see Latanya and Walter and Carolyn and Angela, and I am just imagining out in radio land how many people are listening i know there's so many thanks for typing in the chat those of you on social media facebook youtube thanks for listening in this is katrina harris earl on we got issues you are dialed into 9 10 a.m do uh, wfdf the superstation coming to you out of detroit and all over the world do not change that dial do not this is a show you want to watch i'm telling you First of all, I'm excited to be on the show today. And second of all, we're excited to have our girl, Gloria Mayfield Banks, back from her anniversary birthday vacay. Give us some love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is so exciting. We can't wait to hear about it. You guys, today we have another great show. I know, even yesterday with Amarosa. How many of you listened into the show with Amarosa on radio only? How many of you downloaded the app for the first time? How many of you leaned in and how many of you walked away uh, getting to know a little bit more about the lady who goes by one name, Amarosa, and we all know who she is. Well, today we're kind of going, we're going at it again, and I'm excited to have one of my good, good college friends. I am going to tell you about him. He's amazing an amazing author and lecturer, and we're going to be talking about race. We're going to be talking about COVID. We're going to be talking about what's happening on campuses. We're going to be talking about the Black community. We are going to keep it real today, and so I need you to dial in. Call in 313. Get your girlfriend, your guy friend to dial in and listen in, but call us with your issues. Call us with your opinion. I know some of you are some federal workers out there and you just got a notice from the president that you must be vaccinated. I know maybe one of the girlfriends um, can tell me when that, how long they have, but I want to hear from you. 313-778-7600. So we are going to go to our uh, girlfriends first and Gloria, of course, we got to hear from you. How was your vacay. Sabrina rubbed it in, you know, Virginia Beach. She was talking about the resort. So go on and tell us, how was it with your man? How was it on your birthday? I know you missed us, but not really. <laughs> Virginia is for lovers, okay, so. baby. Virginia is for lovers. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Virginia is for lovers. Sabrina said that. I was like, okie dokie. When I tell you, it was such a good time. Now, Sid, this is what I was thinking. I was telling y'all. You need to, that birthday was so great. That anniversary was so great. Maybe you want to hurry up and get to 65. No, nope, maybe you don't want to hurry up and get to 65. <laughs> it was that fun. It was really that fun. Thank you, my girlfriends, y'all. Seriously, the back channel of the four of friendship our true true girlfriends thank you so much for the gifts thank you so much for the love thank you so much for the post and thank you so much for gathering everybody else to do the same i really 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 appreciate it like tremendously appreciate it. i want to say that i don't want to remind all our listeners that girlfriends matter girlfriends really do matter and that was the reason that we all came together before we even started this talk show was about girlfriends matter and that was just exactly what it was my 25th wedding anniversary you guys seriously i'm telling you i say this all the time 
but I didn't do it, but I say it all the time. 90% of what you worry about doesn't come true. 90% of what you worry about doesn't come true. Mm. So here I am on my 25th anniversary in the midst of COVID thinking, oh my gosh, we're supposed to have a wedding. I'm supposed to go down the aisle again. You see the professional love to me in front of everybody. <laughs> we didn't do none of that. No invitations, no professing love, no nothing. We went away to Salamanders. You guys, Salamanders is a resort by Sheila Johnson, who was co-owner of BET, the first black woman billionaire. And it was a it was a true love for her to get this thing up and going. It's 350 acres. It's an equestrian resort. I didn't, I saw a horse, but I didn't get on one. I learned how to do <laughs> bowls and, and tomahawks and all that kind of stuff. It was so much fun, you guys. So write it down, Salamanders. It needs to go on your goal poster. Everybody needs to go see it. It's a phenomenal place. Okay, okay, so this last thing I'm going to say to you. When I tell you my body started breaking out in highs when I tried to turn off everything. Like, turn off everything, boy. Get off your phone. Get off your iPad. Get off your social media. Don't call nobody. Don't talk to nobody. I was like, ah! I was going nuts. So for those of you who really do know how to let it all go, my hat goes off to you. Look at Sabrina raising her hand. I'm like, I can do it. My hat goes off to all of y'all, and maybe you can teach me how. But when I tell you, it was a, it was something else. Like I was so excited to get on the road for just a minute and call somebody for just a second. <laughs> but really, I had a great time. So thank you guys for the, all the love and the song I missed yesterday and for Amarosa. Okay, why would she come on on my day? Amarosa. Did I say it wrong? Amarosa. Oh, Amarosa. <laughs> Chris is like, Whoa, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ah, ah. Well, I know I said it wrong and I missed the show. So I'm excited to be here, Katrina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. To know you is to know that uh, every <laughs> once in a while I will be Katrina. Katarina, okay. It just is what it is. It just is what it is. I'm so excited. Chris set with your shoulder, with your one shoulder for the face for the radio audience. Okay. One shoulder out. Okay. Giving us something you can, we can feel. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? How are you today, girlfriend? I am doing fantastic, doing fantastic. Went and had a, uh, a facial today, an amazing facial um, by Amir, giving Amir a shout out on today. She is a phenomenal entrepreneur. I mean, this chick got it going on. When I tell you, oh, she was absolutely amazing. But you know what? I do want to say this. I've been doing a, a first lady's prayer call for like eight years uh, at like six o'clock in the morning on Thursdays. And when we first hit COVID, you know, you can just about imagine all the prayers were for people who uh, had gotten the virus. It was for families that had lost loved ones. And so pretty much every week, that's what it was. Well, of course, we um, pulled out and came into 2021 and people were getting vaccinated. But of course, we know we still have the no vaxxers and we have the new variant. Um, the Delta variant, and now it's the Mu variant that's out there. And when I tell you guys today, the prayer list was almost full of COVID, 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 COVID. Really, and really. It was full of pray for all the bereaved people who had family members that died from COVID. So I'm saying that to say wow. it has now come full circle again. And what we were praying about last year, it's right. excited for a minute and now it's back. So it's just when I heard that and I saw the list, I said to myself, I'm absolutely going to mention it on the show today because we have to still be vigilant. And Katrina, you even said we have to pick up the phone, call our loved ones, call our family, call our friends and ask them. And they may say they're not doing it, but when you love somebody, you still have to do the and then some and say, hey, it's not gonna be because I didn't press the issue because people are mm -hmm. dying. Once again, the hospitals are filled. And I heard one of the doctors say today that now they're at a place, you guys, where they have to decide if somebody comes in and they need surgery on something else or somebody has COVID, who gets the bed? 
Who gets the bed? I would hate to be in a position to have to decide who is going to live and who is going to die. So I feel for all of our healthcare workers and our doctors, it is a whole lot. So I just wanted to throw that out today because we just got to stay vigilant and um, we got to call our loved ones and say, hey, I love you enough to say, go get vaccinated. Bree, I'm throwing it to you. Hey, hey, what do you say? Our audio is... uh kind of messed up this today. You guys hear that fuzziness? I hear fuzziness too. And it is not my fan, as I told folks. <laughs> Talk about my fan. Okay. I know the girlfriend's in the chat. It ain't my fan. It ain't my fan. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. It's so good to have you back, Gloria. Great to see you, Katrina. Look at our sunshiny cassette. It's a great day in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, you know that COVID thing, Kenny just got word that one of his best high school friends passed away from COVID two days ago. Wow. So wow. very sad. So very sad. And um, wow. we just keep hearing more and more of this every day. Then, then so many football, you know, we're excited. It's like a holiday in my house. Dallas Cowboys play tonight. So football season officially kicks off. We've got, I know Gloria and I are big football fans. Christina's like, whatever. Katrina don't know if it's basketball or football season. But anyway. Anyway, it is football season. Go Cowboys. So we are ready oh, for some please. football. Not the Cowboys. We, oh, here we yeah, go. Yeah, here yeah, we go. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the defending Super Bowl champs tonight. So we just, we're going to want to see how long this season can last. We're going to see how long this season can last because every day it's either a coach, a player, somebody right. in the right. organization who's not in the game. So here it is. Here it is. Go Cowboys. That's right, Val Valeria. No, no, no. Go with the team. Yeah. Go, go Cowboys. Team. I know it's going to say Baltimore. Yeah, go Cowboys. Right. I know it's going to say go Baltimore. Cowboys. Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore. More Here we go. Baltimore. Here we go. You got to follow the social media so you can see. You got to follow the social media so you can see uh, these uh, all of us with our team. This is unbelievable. Well, we are going to bring our guests in. And uh, yeah, Chris, I totally, I totally and with you that it's it's every day we're getting word about another pastor getting word about another friend it's just it's every day and we're talking about it today because it is hitting uh the covid-19 pandemic has um is in the black community we've dealt always with the pandemic of racism and so now we're dealing with a parallel pandemic and i am excited to have my friend on the show who um if you if his name sounds familiar first of all you want to follow him on social media because number one he's hilarious and number two he's brilliant okay um so you may have seen him on cnn uh he has written for the root for essence magazine among many others i am bringing in my friend from la lawrence ross he attended the UC Berkeley, where I uh, met him and introduced him to his wife. Okay, so he right. thank me forever. Wow. Okay. Wow. okay. You, you got a real is. friend in Katrina. What are those good old college parties? Okay, they was off in the corner and never have separated since. Uh, that is also where he was initiated to Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity in 1985. And he also holds a Master of Fine Arts degree in school writing from the UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television. He is famous for writing his book, The Divine Nine, uh, The History of African-American Fraternities and Sororities, was the first book written about all nine African-American fraternities and sororities. And he has spoken in over 800 colleges and universities, speaking on issues of fraternalism, student development, sorority hazing, his seventh book, Blackballed, The Black and White Politics of Race in America, published uh, uh, by St. Martin's Press. Blackballed explores the present and historical issues of racism on hundreds of America's college campuses. Y'all, of course, he is married to my girlfriend. She better be listening in, April Ross. <laughs> and they have an amazing son. Ain't nobody getting old up in here but his son, Langston. Okay, college. I mean, oh. M G, he is a grown man. Okay, now yeah. so Lawrence, <laughs> welcome to Thank We Got you. Issues. 
We've been Thank doing you. life with college girlfriends forever. So now meet my other girlfriends. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Very nice to meet Talk you. To uh, I, I want to say that Gloria, uh, my wife, went to some conference about 20 years ago. And I swear to God, y'all, you lived in our basement. She was just like, <laughs> Gloria Mayfield Bank. Gloria Mayfield Bank. And I was like, That's who good is to know. That's good to know. Now I get to meet the other side. I get to meet the other side. Thank you, Lawrence. For Definitely. Being here. We're excited about it. Definitely. This. So I am we as just as honored. We love when we introduce people that hem up together and stay together. We love that. Hem <laughs> up together and stay together. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. We'll do. So, so yeah, thank you so much for having me uh, on this afternoon. It's, uh, you know, as Katrina said, by the way, um, when I first met Katrina, you know, we used to have little black books and I did have to put her name phonetically. So Gloria, don't worry about it. I called her uh, Katarina for a time from time to time, uh, way back in the day. So, uh, but thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it so much. And uh, we'll have a great conversation. I can talk to you all about, um, there's a number of things that, um, uh, you know, are really interesting, particularly around race and COVID in particular. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I normally am on college campuses pretty much from September till May for the last 20 years. And uh, one of the reasons why I even decided to, you know, I was really talking about fraternalism, but one of the reasons I decided to uh, talk about race and racism and systemic racism on college campuses uh, was because students of color would come up to me after the lectures uh, and would talk about the fact of their about their experiences. And uh, one of the things that uh, we didn't mention when uh, I didn't put this in the, in the biography is that I'm a co-partner in a uh, creative co-working space uh, in Los Angeles called the Metaphor Club. And obviously, as a creative co-working space, we're you know, dependent upon people being in, uh, in person space. and collaborating uh, in and, and the like. And so what happens is that, you know, when COVID occurred, we really got a kind of a stark understanding about how racism really works. Uh, in terms of how people are hesitant about getting a vaccination. Uh, and it was one of those things that we really had to kind of like scratch our head and if stop kind of getting mad at people. And then we got mad at people again when we figured that we'd explained enough. Uh, but then go back and realize that a lot of folks who just were so distant from um, even regular medical service, particularly men, particularly black men. Um, and so what, oops, uh -oh, I think I lost, lost I think I, I think I lost you. Kick back in. Can you hear me? <laughs> we <laughs> lost you. Push come to shove, you can go old school. Sorry about And that. hold the phone. <laughs> One second. I'll Unplug it and hold the phone. That is so true. That is so true. And while Lawrence is, is there, we're going to jump to a caller. We have two callers on hold. And so Lawrence is coming back. You can tell this, this is, is a deep, great conversation. So I am going to go to Marathon. Marathon, he just called in right in the beginning to get us started. So, okay, we I'm got Lawrence back. Excellent, excellent. So Marathon, are you there? Yeah. Marathon's call drop. Okay, Marathon's okay. call drop. Is Tracy there? Is Tracy, Tracy, are there? Tracy, are you there? Tracy, hung okay, up. Tracy, hung okay, up. Tracy, hung up. Okay, Tracy, hung up. Call back in. Call back in. I ain't taking nothing personal today. This is the office. This is the office. That's the worst thing that happens today. Marathon, we got Tracy. Tell us what's on your mind about race in America. Talk to us, Marathon. Talk to us, Marathon. Well, it just hasn't changed. It's more of the same. You know, they say they're changing, but they still treat us the same way. It's absolutely, true. it's absolutely true in every industry. In right? every industry, right? You deal with it even in the in the uh, entertainment industry and in every industry in life, right? Yes. It's it's it's. We're gonna talk you know, because you because you do music, you know, it's a little more subtle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. music is always supposed to cross yeah. over, but when it comes to that business and what's happening behind the scenes, we know that there's a lot of racism. I just read. Something about the fact that Anita Baker owns her own masters. Like, you know, that's a, right. a big deal, that's a big, big conversation, big you know, yeah. Yeah. in our community, in our community. And, Go ahead, And Prince, uh, Prince, Prince preached that while he was living to own your own masters. And uh, people are starting to listen now. That's awesome. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Well, every generation is supposed to get better, right? Even in the music industry, yeah. we're going to be talking about it today. Well, we thank you for calling in. As always, we got issues, and we appreciate you, Marathon. We want to hear from you. Three one three seven seven eight seven six zero zero. Thanks for calling in, Marathon. Thank you. Thank thank you. 
the Lord. We're going to pray right you after the break right when we come back. Break. But um, this is we have like a minute. So just finish that thought that what you were saying about um, men, particularly. Yeah. Yeah, we always typically think about um, racism as kind of like the direct issue of racism that we deal with on a regular basis. But really what happens is that it becomes something that is uh, long. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long history of it. So what happens is that if you don't have connections to the medical system, say, for example, if you're a black man who don't go, doesn't go into the medical system. Well, when an emergency comes in, well, then therefore you don't have anything built up trust. And if you just add that on with things like medical racism, you can create every scenario, every scenario to not trust what is actually going to save your life. And I've had fraternity brothers who have literally died simply because they didn't trust what they in college educated black men who didn't trust a medical system that they hadn't really uh, been in, in touch with on a regular basis. And they and, and that's the shame. And what's going to happen is that more and more black people are going to be impacted in a very, very terrible uh, way. Wow, wow. Well, we wow. are going to get into that. Even that wow. term medical racism, Lawrence, I would love right. you to tap into that more when we come back yes. from break. Sure. We are going to uh, keep the conversation going here on We Got Issues. We're going to break, but we will be right back. Don't change that dial, y'all. Listening to We Got Issues. It's going down, down. Wow, oh my guys, God. what a great conversation that we're having with Lawrence. When I tell you this topic right here Get is it. one that we have to consistently have, especially um, when we're looking at, you know, um, this COVID environment, we're looking at what's going on, you know, in our schools. It's so much, and sometimes it can become overwhelming, but I don't know about you, but I am still running into a lot of African-Americans, a lot of Black folk who are still not, um, who are still not comfortable in taking the shot, who still do not trust the shot. Um, and I'm talking about family members. And, I'm, and 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 the thing it it's not one type of individual. Uh, it's you know people that are highly educated. I mean, it runs the gamut. So I'm not really sure um, how to change that scenario. Um, put it in the chat if um, you've had to have conversations with you know family and friends about you know um, getting them to go uh, and get vaccinated. But um, I'm really, really uh, interested in hearing what Lawrence, you know, has to say about, you know, um, racism and um, this COVID um, that is going on. I know that, you know, a lot of Black folks say, you know, fool me once, sh shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And then like, you know, after the Tuskegee experiment, there's still those are just do not trust the government. So I don't know. I mean, what are some of the things that you guys think can be done um, to encourage them to, um, you know, go and get vaccinated? I know you can only do what you can do. But, um, you know, when I think about uh, racism and, you know, it really is rearing uh, its ugly head, its heart to even listen to the news without seeing it. I mean, just today they were talking about, you know, some of the things that um, pre former President um, Trump said about the statue of General Robert Lee being taken down um, from Virginia. And of course, in Trump fashion, he got a lot of the facts wrong. Um, and so, you know, I'm really glad. How about you? That they are getting rid of some of getting rid of statues that really perpetuate what was done to us in slavery. They have a place in a museum. If you want to put them in a place that says these are all we are the back. We are races. back. These are the people that we are back. Slaves. Thanks for listening in to We Got Issues and leaning into this important conversation about race. I'm telling you, 
we can't talk about it enough. It is so important to keep in the forefront. And I hope not just my black brothers and sisters are listening in, but I hope there are folks of every color that are listening in because this affects us all. As a matter of fact, we've even heard that there's a possibility of another, when is it in September, supposed to be another protest on um, on the Capitol, mm -hmm. just, you know, so many yeah. things. But unfortunately, when we protest, it doesn't always um, end well for us. I just want to read this and bring you back in, Lawrence. The district disproportionate rate of COVID-19 infection among African-Americans and other minorities um, uh, than the general population is shown by the COVID racial data tracker. The nationally nationally blacks are dying at two and a half times the rate of their white counterparts. The ongoing victimization of African-Americans because of increased racial and social injustice. And this statistic about the pandemic related mental health concerns affect our community 10 times more than our white counterparts. So Lawrence, oh, yeah. this is going to be an easy conversation with the girlfriends, but I want you just to lean in one more time on that medical racism that you were talking about. What does that mean? What does that look like? We could all imagine well, it, but talk to us on the real. Well, you, you, we can be surprised that, for example, that all the things in terms of disproportionate uh, issues when it comes to disease would, would, are, are the exact same things that we could talk about food deserts and nutrition and in terms of uh, environmental exposure. All those things disproportionately hurt us. And so when we talk about medical racism, what we're talking about is not an access to um, to, to medical services at a, a rate that is the rest of society. For example, when we talk about, for example, black men and we talk about prostate cancer, black men and white men get prostate cancer at the exact same rate, but black men die disproportionately more than white men because of the access to, uh, to, to hospitals and to medical, uh, to medical. We go in there later. So we go there when we're less uh, likely to actually be um, eligible to uh, get more medicines to be able to stop the cancer from spreading. Well, that is just what we're now seeing is just in a medical emergency. What you're now seeing are people who reluctantly deal with, we really typically only deal with, well, women, particularly black women, obviously have to go on an annual basis. So there's a little bit much more of a, a connection to the medical, um, to hospitals and to doctors and having a doctor. But when it comes to, in particular, black men or the poor, what you're also talking about is that you go in when, as a friend said, when our arm is barely hanging on. So when we're barely hanging on, that's when we go into the doctor instead of regular upkeep and care. Now, Obamacare did something to help us actually create these regular uh, doctor visits. But you're still talking about generations of people who did, who can point to various aspects of the medical big pharma and the like and say, I don't trust that because they've experimented on black people. And of course, you have the Tuskegee experiment, which is always distorted because when people who don't want the vaccine use the Tuskegee experiment, they don't realize that the Tuskegee experiment was about not giving treatment to people and letting the disease to progress. And so when you have all that, you've got to deconstruct medical racism, both within the community and then exterior mm -hmm. way before a pandemic comes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, so Lawrence, who, who's going to be motivated to do that, Lawrence? Who's going to be motivated to do that when you say inside the community and outside the community? Because it appears that there's so much fight to, to keep it that way. It's to, it, to be able to do, for example, the immediate. What I found was that it can't be a, you know, we get a lot of young uh, creatives and artists here in Lamert Park in, in Los Angeles who come in and you, you, they're not going to listen to a man in their 50s tell them about what they need to do. But what they will listen to is a peer. And what we've got to be able to do is start really understanding that there are a lot of young in particular, young folks who are in their 20s to 30s who are leaders, and we've got to give them the tools to be able to right. lead. It doesn't, it, it doesn't necessarily always mean the same name brand people that we put out there and think that they're just going to go and be persuaded. No, you've got to go out and get people that they trust, people that you probably, we probably don't even know, to go out there and get them to be co convinced to be able to understand how to save their own lives. Now, on a broader macro, well, we then have to say, well, then all of the different medical Kaiser and all the rest of the places, you all have to do outreach into the community every single day. You can't just simply say, oh, it's an emergency. You have to do this type of work every single day to where people can build up relationships with their doctors, with their uh, their their hospitals and be able to recognize that 
you know, medicine, yes, you should be curious, you should be thoughtful, you should be asking questions, but you should also recognize the danger between a deadly disease and a vaccine. Mm. That's good. That's good. We're going to go to a caller. We're going to go to Harry. Harry is on the line and we want to have him lean into this conversation. Harry, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing? We're doing great today, Harry. Thanks for listening in. Yep, yep. I just always, you know, I, I always find interest in how the, uh, on the radio you hear people constantly, you know, urging people to to take the vaccine, but in, in real life, you know, here in Detroit, there's probably 80% of people that have not, that aren't fully vaccinated, you know, so I just, it's, it's never any voices for the people that don't want to take the vaccine. It's always, you know, a whole show full of people telling people, go take the vaccine, go take the vaccine, but that's not, you know, that's like a minority opinion. Um, I, myself, personally, I'm waiting for, you know, vaccines. I, I wouldn't even consider taking an experimental vaccine where the government doesn't have any liability or the vaccine makers don't have any liability if I have adverse reaction. You know, I, 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 there's no way that I'm interested in taking an experimental vaccine. And I think when you really feel down, that's what, how everybody feels about it in this community. You know, if, if it is so safe, the manufacturers wouldn't need protection from being sued, and it would have FDA approval. I, I want Lawrence to respond. Respond to, uh, yeah. to him. How would you? How would you answer that question? Because this is what's happening in our community, as well as all communities. Yeah. So, 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 so I think that I think there's this is where we get confusion. This is when we have confusion during a pandemic where we're trying to get a whole bunch of information and, and do action at the exact same time. The first thing is to understand that this isn't an experimental uh, vaccine. What you have to understand is that you notice notice that we talk about COVID-19. This is just the 19th version of COVID. It's the, if you look at your common medicine, you will find that there's, you know, COVID, the, the corona novel virus. You will find that there's medicines to deal with. That's your common cold. And what, they're, what, you, what you're basically seeing is not an experimental vaccine. What you're seeing are scientists basically saying that, the, and, and the government, I'm, hold on, let me finish before I haven't even said what the fact was. But let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get let me get to the, let me get to the fact. Let him, let him say that. Let me get to the let go to the Um so my 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 mic is muted. No. Oh we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. We're good. Okay. So 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 one of the things you have to recognize is that when we talk about what they did, they basically cleared the way. They put it on a fast track. They basically took all the other medicines that they were working on and concentrated their efforts on creating a vaccine. That's what we were talking about in terms of doing that. And the only reason what they basically said is that the emergency is so important that you have to bring it to the floor and then you will get it, right, like the FDA did, just to approve it. But in terms of experimental, it, it is emergency. Is it's, 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 there, there has not been granted FDA approval. We have not completed it. Um, no, it is not. They're, they're, they're all, they're all, all of their Pfizer vaccine. has just been a Pfizer It is. Pfizer has not been FDA. That's, that's, a, that's a lie. Pfizer's vaccine is under the emergency authorization. They have a new vaccine that was granted FDA approval, but you can't get that in America. They're playing word oh, No, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. Please, no. Please, what are you no. talking about? I'm talking about this Pfizer. Is FDA gave two, put out two letters the day that they announced the Pfizer clearance. They cleared, they approved one vaccine. It was called Cortina, Cortinia, or something. And it's not available yet. It's not available in the United States. They extended the EAU, the EUA for the existing vaccine. So you get get a Pfizer vaccine today, you are getting the vaccine that has the emergency use authorization. You are not getting any kind of FDA approved vaccine. Those are not available in America. Gary, you know what? I have a question for you because I I have a question for you as to where you're getting your invitation. I mean, your information from the FDA. And he said the worst problem that they have 
is that bad information is everywhere. That's the worst okay, thing that we have in America. It's bad information. But, but I, 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 not bad. I don't want you to be degraded here, but I hear what you're saying. But then the last thing you're saying is that you're supposed to disagree. No, you can't do it. Terry, Terry, we have we have about three or four callers, and, and we so appreciate because we want people that have a different opinion to step in and to call us at three one three seven seven eight seven six zero zero. We have several people on hold, so we really appreciate what you shared. I would love for you to take that article that you found or the the link that you found and post it even on our our, our fan page and share. Um, show us where it is because sometimes even as the tech guru I am, sometimes it can say FDA and it ain't really FDA. Like when I just sent my girlfriend and we went to try to find it on NBC and it was nowhere to be found. So you've got to be careful. This is what I find also is everyone who, when they do get COVID, everyone still goes to the hospital. And I'm like, you're going to the hospital after that is when the arm is hanging off that's what lawrence just said and if you either as sabrina will say it again what we're experiencing in our communities is you'll either get back the vaccine or you'll get the virus and some of us will get well, it's your choice yeah it's your choice it becomes your choice that, this is the major to say that 80 percent are not vaccinated is a non that's not true not and that's not the truth in, in detroit it is not 80% in Detroit that's not vaccinated. We are not at 80% that are not. And I'll look up that information and share it. So we appreciate you for calling in, Harry. I'm going to let Lawrence go ahead, Lawrence, and then we'll go to Todd. So let's just take it soon. Let's just take a scene is experimental. So you really basically have two choices. You have 670,000 uh, people who have died from COVID. We know what that does, not counting all the long term, long COVID issues that you have versus a vaccine that basically keeps 90 percent, 90 percent of the people out of the hospital. We know that 90 percent of the people who are in hospitals and right now who get sick from COVID are unvaccinated. So experimental or not, experimental, if I take, which I don't take, but experimental or not, it is proving to be effective. Good afternoon, good evening. Hello, Cousin Sabrina. This is my first call. <laughs> Hi. I don't think we have anything major to say. I'm just happy to finally have the moment to call and listen in to all of the information. So, hello, everyone. Thank you. And, and glad um, to call. Yeah. My only sense would be to say that I am vaccinated, fully vaccinated. I'm happy to do so because... I want to live and I don't want to affect other people. And even though I don't know all of the components or all of the information that is inside a vaccine, I'd rather have the vaccine than it. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John. And we're so grateful. Uh, Kevin, our radio operator, did just send the, the link. Uh, Pfizer's vaccine approved on FDA. There's a direct statement on the website. Uh, the vaccine is being marked as let me see if I can say it correctly. Comirnaty, C-O-M-I-R-N-A-T-Y. And so we'll, we're being marketed as Comirnaty. I should have said that to you, Lauren, to pronounce it for me. So, so that is good. That is good. We're going to go to one more caller, and then I'm going to bring you back in. Um, Lauren, we want to hit on um, campuses, too. What's taking place on campuses and just that whole, the whole situation from the HBCU to those uh, of us that um, did not go to HBCU currently, how they're dealing with racism and COVID. Uh, so we're going to go to Shamir. We're going to go to Shamir, and then we'll go back to you, Lauren. Shamir, are you there? Thanks for calling. We got issues. Yes, I'm here. But what I want to ask you, why don't you also uh, give justice to the people who don't want to take a vaccine? So, vaccine. so why don't you put people on the show who will still play to do a new build-up and see the results there? Okay, look here. So why don't we put my sister, my sister is a nutritionist, and look what we're going to keep. And this is what we do. Now, I'm going to be telling you a thing. I'm going to try to get her now. 
four people went into the hospital. She done got over three people, one Jesse and a couple of ones in the hospital. They so sick from the virus, they didn't have to go on the ventilation. She go get them out of the hospital, not one time, four times. Now they're going to go on the ventilator. In one week, they had no signs of the virus, and both of them were back at the work in the second week when they were going to go on the ventilator. Look at that. She went down this to you. She went down to Tennessee. She got three people right there on going to. So what I'm saying is that it's not even my situation yet. I, I, uh, uh, I would call you tomorrow, and I would have other them to me to be able to check me. I'm 70 years old. I've been building my meal up for about 45 years. I would came into 15 contacts and been in the room with people, over 10 people with the virus with no mask on, where well, they had to be in a field in the hospital. I'd never get certain anything with anything. Now, uh, now, now we're the police thing, and look here. Here's the way we can settle this thing. Y'all would believe it is actually so good. I'm not trying to be sarcastic or funny, but my man here who was speaking of ticketing, like Sheffield and the people who went on to TV, Saying, okay, why don't y'all do this then? And I got a way we can solve the problem. Dr. McKay, this is you know. Don't wear any mask. Why don't y'all go spend a day on a, on a, on a virus war, war where people sit from the virus? Don't wear no mask and prove that the vaccine works right there. And then we just got to take this out there. There to be enough evidence to prove that the vaccine will work. She's going to Florida and all the people that get on TV and say, Chicken, why don't they, why don't they do this? I don't think. Won't that be a, the, the right way? You got so confidence in the no. in the back. I won't be. I won't do that. I won't do that. But we appreciate your opinion. I'm gonna let Lawrence jump in. I agree in uh, that nutrition is important. It's important that we do things to boost our immune system. However, we buy the vaccine. So Lawrence, go ahead and and jump in. Oh, so it's conflating a bunch of things. Uh, the first thing is that, yes, immune, yeah, building up your immune system is absolutely phenomenal. That's what you want to do. It is not a protection against a viral infection. And the next thing, I don't care. I have never met your sister. I am telling you that she did not pull them off of a ventilator. The reason why they don't pull you off a ventilator is because your oxygen level goes low. They're th so therefore, they need to supplement it. Uh, why do I know? One of my fraternity brothers was on a ventilator for three weeks. One of the very few people who actually made it off of a ventilator at the beginning of this. So whatever anyone told you that they pulled you off a ventilator, no hospital on the earth would take you, <laughs> let you go outside with a ventilator. The next thing is that saying, oh, will I walk around without a mask? Okay, I am fully vaccinated. Vaccinations do not stop you from getting COVID. They Say prevent it again. you from being so sick that you are in the hospital. Say you it again, say it again, COVID. and say it one more you time. You can get COVID. It just doesn't kill you. So there is a fundamental misunderstanding. And this is part of what we have to stop doing. And this is the reason why we don't bring people on. I mean, I can go into any black barbershop in America and get the same argument. Right. And that argument sounds good, but it's detrimental to black people. And you can't be detrimental to black people when you want. If you love black people, you want to make sure that black people get the best medicine they possibly can. Because I guarantee you, particularly you said you were 73 years old. If you're 73 years old and with the unvaccinated, you are in the high vulnerability because every black person I know has a comorbidity. Some sort of comorbidity. You may not know it. It may be high blood pressure, diabetes, some comorbidity. But when you're in your 70s, your comorbidities go up higher. So I wouldn't give, I would say, build up your immunity, get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. That's good. Chris, I just want you to, to jump in coming from a Detroit standpoint. I want you to make a statement. Um, the church is doing so much to get the word out. So what would you add? And then Sharon, Rhea, Sandy, we're going to pop right back to our callers. OK. Oh, my goodness. This is such a hot show. And Lawrence, thank you for setting the record straight. We got to set the record straight as often and as loudly as we can, because just because you're passionate, just because you're emotional, just because you scream it don't mean that it's true. So let me set the record straight, because one of our callers said that in um, Detroit or in Michigan, 80 percent of um, the residents had not um, gotten vaccinated. Well, that is not the truth. In Michigan, we have 10.3 million individuals who have taken the first dose. 5.9 have gotten their second dose. So 
we have a total of 51% of Michiganders have been totally vaccinated. Now, 50%, 20%. He said 20% had taken the vaccination when in reality, 51% in Michigan are fully vaccinated. And that is why you have to do your own res your own research. But you got to make sure that when you are doing research, that it is credible. Because just because your cousin's friend that you that went to medical school but didn't finish medical school said that it's the truth, don't make it the truth. Right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, because we got okay. issues. And at Greater Grace Temple, I'm telling you, my husband don't have a problem. He is screaming it from the mountaintop. He is telling everybody to get vaccinated. So every single Sunday from 9 until 12, you can roll up to Greater Grace Temple, 23500 West Seven Mile Road, and you can get vaccinated. 2300 okay 500 23500 west seven mile road you can get vaccinated from nine until noon so we're not playing with it so back to you Kat. thank you thank you thank and you I, I mean we appreciate go ahead lawrence go ahead uh you know and and, and on the the other side i can understand why people create these ideas of I can do alternative things instead of getting vaccination. That is kind of a symbolic of our lack of working with the medical uh, medical community. We, everyone has gone to Thanksgiving where someone has said, I take echinacea and some other ginger root and some turmeric and it cured this. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> that actually may do that. But this is a viral infection. And there's a difference between understanding this thing that may be a holistic approach to something versus a deadly uh, approach to something. And this is deadly. And this is literally, you will be alive today and a week you will be dead. And I've seen it over and over and over. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you. This is good. Everybody got a mic to drop today. We are going to Sharon. Sharon and uh, Rhea and Sandy, Stay on hold for us. We're going to try to get to everyone. Sharon, are you there? Thank you. Yes, I am. Good evening. I appreciate your discussion about the vaccine. Uh, the vaccine is virus going on. Uh, some people are immune to the virus for some reason or another. I have a son. He wears a mask at times, and sometimes he don't. So far, he has not caught COVID-19 virus. He has not been vaccinated. And I also want to say the FDA has approved the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. And the Pfizer vaccine is also, they're giving up the booster shots to some people. So uh, the FDA has approved these vaccines. Well, well, thank you for adding that. And the question would be again, would the medical term be immune? Or is it just a roll of the dice? Lucky people that are exactly lucky. You know, it just didn't happen that time. Um, and so I don't know if, if you know, it was medically tested. If they would find that out to be an immunity. Um, so, but thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. I'm going to go to Ria. Ria, thanks for dialing in. So we got issues. Hi, Drea. Oh, Rhea. Rhea, how are you? Drea. Drea. Okay. Hey, Drea. <laughs> How are you, ladies? We're doing oh, great. Right. I'm going to say it the easy way. I'm more afraid of dying from COVID than I'm afraid of getting a side effect from the vaccine. But as of yesterday, 53.3% of, of the United States people have been vaccinated with COVID. And it says less with your vaccine, it is a less than 1% chance of getting the deathly high effect of COVID where you're in the hospital with the ventilator and all of that. That's what the vaccines are doing for us. Well, we appreciate that, Tria. My little part. Love you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you so much. Yes, while people are sitting around waiting on what the side effects might be, 
uh, a lot of people, my two of my friends, my neighbor across the street and my friend, they were waiting, and there will be no side effects because they've lost their lives. Um, mm. There's no yeah. time for them to wait. Wow. So um, they, they literally, while I'm on the phone, are cleaning out the, the home of um, my girlfriend across the street. So, Lawrence, I want to go to you and have you talk a little bit about campuses. What's happening on campuses? This How adding to the racism that already was taking place on our college campuses today. So you always have to remember that, you know, when we talk about racism, particularly amongst vulnerable populations, and when we talk about black students, particularly on pre predominantly white institutions, there are always five, you know, maybe 10 percent of a population on a good day. And so whenever you have a vulnerable population plus stress in a society, well, then there's an, an outlet for a target. And black students have been just, you would think through a pandemic that racists wouldn't have time to actually do things geared toward other people, but au contraire, they have plenty of time. And so you, what you see is a mixture of white supremacists who create demonstrative acts against uh, uh, black students uh, and minority students in particular, or just basically trying to create a, a, a scenario to where um, the students feel uncomfortable on campus. Um, you can see this leaking out with kind of this absurd uh, argument with about you know critical race theory, um, where people think that a, a law, basically a course that is in law, is something that a kindergartner is going to be learning. But what happens is that when societies get stressed, whether or not it's high school campuses or elementary school campuses or college campuses, what happens is that you get the racism because people want to blame someone. They want to blame something one for the uh, for the instability. They want to blame someone for the reason the society actually is uh, is as it is. And really, you know, of course, regardless of having a pandemic, you still have it going on, you know, year by year by year by year because of the structures, uh, the structures that sometimes don't see uh, students of color. Uh, don't recognize students of color, don't recognize their issues. Uh, and then within that vacuum uh, uh, leaves uh, people and individual students who didn't, then decide to actuate their racism against those students. And so we're seeing this still, you know, it doesn't matter in terms of PWIs, we're talking about, you know, Stanford just had an incident just about a month ago um, where um, this one student decided that he was going to put uh, various offensive pictures uh, in naming the names of uh, black students, you know, who are in uh, student government and things like that. And Stanford kicked them off campus. But that is not unusual. Uh, we typically have campus racism incidents like five times per year. Uh, we have it during um, Halloween, Black History Month, Martin Luther King's birthday, uh, and then definitely during um, Cinco de Mayo. And so when you have all those things together, plus a pandemic, well, you're going to see an, uh, an acute amount of it. And it's going to happen this year, too. Wow. I mean, I'd like to have you come back on the show just to talk about critical race theory, like just to break right. that down for people to understand why are people up in arms about real history being right. told. I'm going to go to another caller, Lawrence, but I want them, you to tell them how they can follow you, how they can get your book, just because uh, I'm telling you, you read some of the stuff Lawrence writes, it's like, dang, okay, you go <laughs> in, you kind of sanitize, it might be a few uh, special words that come out your mouth. Oh, you yeah, really yeah, yeah. Them. It is, it is, uh, mine is unfiltered. Uh, I'm unapologetically black, so I, it is unfiltered. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's in all my, and in Instagram, it's all I have the most alpha phi alpha uh, handle uh, possible. It's alpha 1906. Uh, so you can get that on Twitter and you can get that on Instagram. And then you can follow me on Facebook. You can just look up my name. Uh, my page is open. Uh, the only ones that I block are racist. So don't if you learn you're not racist, I block you. Uh, yeah, I'm good. So uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm happy to, to meet uh, new folks and everything. And you tell them before you block them, I am about to block you. And then oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I have troll afterwards. And then you go block. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The I, public you know, is brutal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mock the racists and then I block them so they can't respond. <laughs> <laughs> so they're an yes, eternal yes. hell of wondering what they could have said. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I want to go. I hope that Sandy is still there. Sandy, are you still there? Thanks for calling. We got issues. Oh, yeah. How are you? Actually, I had two in um, due to one of my coworkers, Tom Parker, sending us the information, but they were letting me jump on. But I was glad that I thought it was difficult. I had COVID, 
So for those who do feel like it was real, it was just a real illness. And so for me, that patient was very important for the reason that follows. I have elderly parents and grandparents, and I like to travel. So I didn't want these areas of limitations set up. You know, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I like to do and enjoy some quality of life through people to be more handled. Like, you guys are amazing. I'm loving this, and I will tune in more often. Yes, thank you. Let me just ask you, Sandy, yeah. were you vaccinated when you got COVID? Were you vaccinated? No, I was not vaccinated. We got COVID at the end of November last year. Me and my um, daughter was almost seven months pregnant at the time, and neither of us, my last friends, had to be hospitalized or go on ventilators, but at the same time, I had a good friend. But ended up in the ICU for 21 days, so she did not end up on the ventilator and not by her birth. Wow, wow. Um, and you are vaccinated now? Yes, indeed. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate you for calling in. Well, we want to get um, just uh, the girlfriends in. It's a hot this conversation, is- Gloria. I know. <laughs> I know it's hot. So, girlfriends, come on in real quick. We're going to give Lawrence the last word. Well, I just want to say it's a very hot conversation and it's a very place. I'm not apologizing. I'm not trying to be make people comfortable. You know, we're done with making people comfortable. The bottom right. line is, yeah. is, you know, as as we know, we just need to understand the people that are not comfortable with this conversation need to lean in and say, why are you so passionate? Why are you why are you so passionate? But I'm passionate and I'm not apologizing for it because you do have a choice. Sick or die. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate that we're still having these same conversations. It's the same conversation over and over. When we approach the subject, people get hostile, you get upset, and you prove the same unproven points. And you keep bringing up the same issues that are non issues. And so, really, it's virus or vaccine. Make a choice die or live. That's where we are. Chris, you, I I already said everything I need to say. We're gonna give Lawrence the last word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't really say much more. I mean, one I mean, the one thing that we always have to do is recognize the power that we have is to get knowledge. And I'm not talking about fake knowledge. I'm talking right. about real knowledge. And I'm talking about looking to go to people who are professionals who understand. You know, I think I know a lot. But I stayed off the north side of Berkeley's campus, which was the science side. But I do know that when I need science, I go talk to scientists and every scientist will tell you all the same. And it's important to recognize that if you love yourself, but if even if you don't love yourself, if you love the people that you love and don't want to uh, give it to them or you don't want to uh, be a burden when you die or you get uh, sick on a long uh, uh, amount of a large a little amount of time, then you need to get vaccinated. There's no more excuses and you will die. And I'm not trying to be, you know, hyperbolic. Morbid, you right? will die and mm-hmm. you will ask mm-hmm. for the vaccine while you're in the hospital and it will be late, way too late. Well, we hope that this inspired you. We hope that this um, informed you and we thank you for tuning in to We Got Issues. We will be back here tomorrow. Go get Lawrence's book, Blackballed on Amazon. Follow him at Alpha1906. This was a great conversation. Be sure to follow us at The Force of Friendship and we will be right here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lawrence. Bye-bye. Thanks, Lawrence. It was awesome. It was awesome.